So I thought we'd just stick with the basics. It's summertime. We don't need to do a lot of extra work. We've got plenty to do just keeping cool and actually moving our bodies when it gets hot. So this is what I would call yoga basics. Pretty simple. But I wanted to start with a quote. I love my quotes. And this one is by the poet Rumi. <clears throat> and he says, and do not worry that your life is turning upside down. How do you know that the side you're used to is better than the one to come? And I love this quote because I do feel like our world is turning upside down once again. And in that rolling tumult of change and all that we have, I want to remember maybe it's going to be better. Maybe it's just going to be different. Who knows? I just want to be there for that journey. So let's just bring our palms together, whether you're lying down or sitting up and take three deep breaths. You can blow them out your mouth if you'd like or with the mouth closed. And as you breathe out, letting go of what came before, as you breathe in, becoming present to what is right now. Setting an intention to be kind and loving and present for yourself. And we say to ourselves and each other, namaste, and then let's lay back, all the way back on our backs. And we will breathe into our bellies. If you'd like, you could put a hand on your heart. It's over there on the left side of your chest. <laughs> and you can put a hand on your belly and maybe you'll feel your heart beating. You don't have to put your hands there if you don't want to. Find any comfy position for your legs and let the back slowly settle into the floor as you just breathe more and more down into the diaphragm, the low belly. On the inhale, the belly rises, but the chest stays fairly stable. And on the exhale, the belly falls, and then we engage the core and press the air out, all the way out. And let's do that four or five times. And you're trying to use your nose, if you can. Notice the sensation of the soles of your feet, whether they're on the mat or in the air. And the sensation in the back of your head where it's resting on the ground. Let's take one more breath here, deep belly breath. And as you let it go, you can start to lift your fingers away from the body, twist the wrists, maybe even reach the arms up in the air, open and close those fingers. You can arch the back a little bit, maybe the hands go over the head to the floor. We're just gonna stretch some good morning stretches like a cat. <laughs> or maybe you have a dog and you're gonna stretch like that. These are just the first stretches you want to do on your mat today. And remember, you're always invited to do what you want to do. I know that by coming, you've already decided you want to do mostly what I say. <laughs> but I, I get it that sometimes I like to rebel. So do whatever works for you. I'm going to rock my knees side to side, letting the waist start to get a little bit of a twist and a stretch. And the arms can go wherever you like. If you like that feeling of the chest being stretched open, they could go over your head for a long time. But if your shoulders aren't very happy, you might prefer to have the arms down beside you. Rocking side to side, just twice more to each side. And then the knees come back to center and we pull them into the belly and wrap our hands around the shins. Now you can keep rocking. See if you can feel the back of your hips, that back bone down low in your, in your back on your hip part. See if you can feel it as you rock side to side. And then come on back to center, rock the knees away, straightening the arms, maybe the tip of the toes tap the floor and we feel that back arch. And then we pull the belly 
the knees into the belly and flatten the back out. This is pelvic tilts. Just simply moving the hips. Once more, let the knees rock away. And then as you pull them in, hold onto your right knee alone and let your left leg kind of rock around, make some circles with the kneecap and eventually start to straighten the leg. You can make big circles on the ceiling. I'm going so wide that my toes could draw a circle around the whole ceiling almost. Big circles. One direction and then the other. And if you find little spots that feel like they're kind of hooked or they get a little pop or something, if you like it, that's okay. If you don't like it, don't go there. <laughs> All right, let's bring the leg back to center, push up through the heel to curl those toes down toward the nose. Take a deep breath in, squeeze the right knee that you're holding, and on the exhale, lower the left leg slowly to the floor. All the air out. Keep breathing if, you're, if you need to breathe in again. Let the left leg hover just right above the floor. Make sure you feel the floor and then hover right above it. And just swing the left leg that's hovering side to side a few times. Feel where it is attached at the hip and the waist, side to side. Good, come back to center, take a deep breath in, and then on the exhale, lift the leg. Feel the weight of it in your hip and your leg, and pull that knee in. Rocking side to side, both knees are in. You can move them around in circles, pressing them open and together. And then we'll hold on to the left knee and let the right knee big, make big circles and then maybe the leg straightens out a little. And just notice how the bent knee feels different from the straight leg. There's a lot more weight there. So that means you have options. If for any reason you find a spot in that hip that doesn't like the weight of the whole leg, just bend your knee at that point. Just moving it around, one more big breath. Bringing that knee back to center. Let's lift the right leg up in the air. We're still holding the left knee in. Take a breath in, flatten the heel up toward the sky, and then exhale, lower the leg all the way to the floor, and then let it hover. Stretch a little, and then swing that leg side to side. It's not a very big swing because we don't have a lot of range of motion here, but we've got some strength. And we can feel the weight of the leg in the core, in the hip socket. Take another breath. And let it out. Bring the leg back to center, breathing in again, just simply hovering. And on that exhale, lift the leg high, full exhale as you pull the knee back into the chest and roll those knees around. Big swoops, good. Let's settle the feet back on the floor. I'm gonna let my outer edges of my feet touch the edges of the mat as I rock with the knees wider. That feels good. I'm gonna take my arms out wide as well, just opening up the chest. And then bringing the knees back to center, I'm gonna leave my feet wide like this you can walk them to wherever you like. And I'm gonna pick up my right ankle and put it in front of my left thigh. So it feels a little off because the foot that's on the floor isn't centered. So there's a little more work going on in that hip. And I'm just gonna rock the hips side to side here. It feels better because when I rock the legs away, I can kind of feel that hip rise up and that's okay. It can rise a little, it's holding some of the weight of the legs as we rock. After you've rocked a couple times side to side, come to center and pull the knees toward you with the ankle still crossed. Usually I just grab the foot and the knee that's right in front of me. Some people like to slide a hand between the legs, grab hold of the back of the thigh and lift the leg. You've got lots of options, of course. Just breathing, stretching into that figure four stretch. It's kind of early, so it's not gonna be real warm. <laughs> Wiggle your toes and then set the foot down. Let's uncross the ankle, bring the soles of the feet together and find a butterfly for a breath right down deep into the belly. Breathe all the air out 
and then walk those feet wide once more. You can rock the knees a couple times or you can immediately pick up the left ankle and put it in front of the right thigh. Coming into that off kilter figure four because the feet are wide or maybe you've chosen to do it more centered, that's fine. And we're rocking, feeling the shift in the weight. Just very simple movement. And just by feeling the differences of different positions, we're building the ability to know our own bodies. Eventually, you'll bring the knees in toward you, deepening the figure four stretch, centering everything. Feel free and play, do what you like. Coming back to center, floating the foot to the floor, uncrossing and coming to butterfly. Soles of the feet together, knees apart. You can lift and lower the hips to just settle the body down. And I'm gonna tuck my hands behind my head as well. Take two breaths into the belly and expand the chest here too. As you finish that second breath, slide the hands out, bring the knees back together, pull them into the chest and give yourself a squeeze. I'm gonna hold on behind my legs. I'm moving toward happy baby. So the, the thighs stay squeezed in and start to slide apart as the feet might float toward the flat, flattening toward the sky or maybe rolling the ankles, happy baby. Now, if you have any kind of osteoporosis, you're just wanna, you wanna keep your knees a little softer. You wanna keep your tailbone a little closer to the floor. If there's no worry about uh, injury with bones, then you can really flatten those feet. You could grab the outer edges of your feet and really press the knees down so the tailbone pops up away from the ground. And then let's hold on to our right foot or leg and just let the left one float down to the floor. And we're just gonna hold on to the right leg, a half happy baby. Maybe the other knee stays bent for a while. Maybe it straightens all the way out. Half happy baby, such a wonderful stretch. This is our lunge in the air. Do you feel that? The foot that's out there on, on top. If you could flip yourself over, you would be standing on that foot. <laughs> and then pull that long left leg back in, hold on to it and switch the sides, letting go of the right leg. Stretching into the lunge. Lengthen that long leg and then pull it slowly back. Nice wide, happy baby, one more breath. And the feet float down. Let's go ahead and lay the legs side by side down on the mat, long on the mat, just to let the hips open all the way. You can even rub the fronts of the hips there a little bit. Those hip flexors do a lot of work. They pick up our legs with every step we take. We're gonna to move toward bridge pose. So when your legs feel like they've had a little break, maybe rock those toes in and out a few times to just warm the hip sockets. Slide the feet onto the floor about hips width apart. Roll the shoulder blades back, tuck them under, hands down by your sides, lift the hips slowly from the ground. And of course you can add the bent elbows, the fingers toward the sky, pushing into the floor with the backs of the arms, or you can let the hands and the arms be more soft or maybe walk them together underneath you. You've got lots of options as usual. Keep breathing. Maybe that's something we can remember that in the middle of everything turning upside down, we've got lots of options. <laughs> Sometimes having too many options is the problem. <laughs> So maybe just smile a little bit. Try not to take it too seriously. Take another big breath. And slowly settle down. Take a moment, just rocking the knees side to side and then roll over onto one of your sides. Stack the knees for a moment and take a breath. Just a moment for gratitude. In the midst of the change, there is so much good. A deep breath, and then slowly pushing up, grabbing something to sit on. I'd like to share a mudra with you today. 
This is the Murti Mudra, M-U-R-T-I, and it is all about stability. I definitely love stability. So in the midst of change, there really isn't any stability, right? But we're always trying to right ourselves. So let's practice this one, see what it feels like. We're just gonna link all the fingers together, just slide the hands, the fingers between the other fingers, and then point your pinky fingers out. Kind of just point them out underneath there. They're gonna touch each other and point straight out. Just the pinkies are touching. So we take the hands, link them together, and then just point the pinky fingers out. Does that make sense? <laughs> here, let me show you. One person might be confused. So I'm just linking my fingers here, and then I'm pointing my pinky fingers out. So I still can see inside my palms. There we go, okay. So I like this. This feels like I'm pointing down. So let's do that. Let's just point it down at the floor right in front of us and feel that rooting down feel that holding together. And the affirmation is steadiness and comfort at all levels of being provides a firm foundation for my path. Steadiness and comfort. What an idea. <laughs> Let's just take one more deep breath here together. And then releasing the hands, let's take them out wide, stretch through the arms. I like to tip my fingers down, my heels of my hands up and get that inner arm stretch. Now, if you need to change your leg position at any time, please feel free to do that. I'm gonna to start to rock side to side. I might flip my hands back and forth as I lean or just keep them in a spot that you like. We're gonna do the seven movements of the spine. We've already done number one, which is just sitting up tall. This is number two and three, side to side. Keep breathing through your nose as much as you can. And let's lean all the way to one side. Let the hand soften into the floor, lean the other arm over, really nice deep stretch. The hip you're leaning away from, let it get deeper into what you're sitting on and then maybe roll forward just slightly and then back, forward and back just a tiny bit. We don't wanna round the spine, we just wanna stretch the back of the ribs. And when you're ready, you're gonna rake your arms straight up in the air, reach up long, maybe lean back a little bit, pull the belly in and then find the other side of that stretch. Just enjoying it. Arms up nice and high when you're finished. Roll the fingers, wiggle the hands, and let them float down and pause for the breath up and down the spine, good. Now, if you have any kind of osteoporosis, you're not gonna round the low back at all. You might just give yourself a big hug with your shoulders kind of curving in. If you're okay and you know your spine is safe, you can roll the shoulders up toward the ears and then pull the belly in and round that back rocking onto the tailbone, maybe even hooking the hands on the knees and lifting them slightly so you can kind of get a little rocking going. Now, if there's that kind of osteo, then you're just sitting up nice and tall. Maybe you're just rolling your shoulders forward and back and you're getting that upper back stretch. Once you're finished which with, with whichever one you like, we're gonna move into that cow stretch. This one's for everybody. Heart leans forward, stretching forward. Lean, Reach back with your hands, your heart is stretching forward. And I like to let my hands go behind me or maybe even link the fingers, roll the shoulders back so that that heart gets way open. And I like to lean a little bit. I gotta move my legs around a little to get my hips to allow me to lean into this stretch, but no rounding. Remember, we're just lifting the heart, squeezing the shoulders, one more big breath. And coming back to center. Let's go ahead and switch the cross of our legs. If you prefer, you could even go into a wide angle if your knees need a break. I think mine might need just a minute to open up. And then we'll go right back into that crisscross that doesn't feel quite right. So I have to go into my comfy one and then go the other way. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna twist. So let's do it with our breath. Inhale, the arms rise up. Exhale, we turn to one side and the hands float down. Inhale, rising up to center. 
Exhaling to the other side. Let's do this a couple more times on each side. Just follow your breath. Just even yourself out. Come back to center and just roll the shoulders, maybe rock a little. If your neck needs some love, maybe say yes, and then say no. <laughs> Lots of options, remember. And let's take our time to get on our hands and our knees. Table pose. Sliding a blanket under those kneecaps is always a good idea. Hands planted, fingers wide, right under the shoulders, and just start to move. Maybe just close your eyes and rock, roll, stretch. Yoga is, I'm just gonna make this up and say, yoga is a repetitive, non-repetitive movement for the joints. So we repeat a lot of our movements. We're, we're tipping the pelvis back and forth, but we're in a completely different orientation. Sometimes we're on our back, sometimes we're standing up, sometimes we're on table pose. And by changing the orientation, we change the repetitive movement so it's less repetitive and more beneficial. If you haven't paused in the middle for a big cat-cow stretch, do that now. Linking it with your breath. I like to inhale, tip the shoulders back, the tailbone up, the belly sags. And then exhale, round the back, pull the belly up toward the spine, just a couple more times. Let's give our wrists a quick break by just placing our elbow points in those handprints on the mat. Rock a little side to side, making sure the shoulders have lots of warmth and fluid. If you like, you can always stay here on your elbows, give your wrists a big break, or you can come back to table and maybe twist the wrists a few times before you get there. And let's do a little leg stretch. Let's keep our toes curled under and slide the right leg back along the mat all the way to the end till the leg opens up wide and then rock into the heel, forward and back a few times, just stretching, flattening the back, letting the head hang wherever we like. And then let's begin to come to center and slide the opposite hand on the floor in front of us so, so that the pinky finger is on the bottom, the thumb is pointing up, but we're still have the hand on the floor, opposite leg, opposite hand. And if, if you like, you can start to lift hand and arm up and down, hand and arm, foot and hand up and down a couple of times. There you go, maybe up and down or maybe hold. But I like that movement, it's warming, it's using the core. Movement always increases the difficulty of our balance. I am gonna pause for a couple of breaths with the leg and the arm reaching out, maybe point the toes, wiggle the fingers, the feet, whatever you like, take another big breath. And then come on down, knee down, hand down. Let's widen the knees apart. Come down onto at least our elbows, if not all the way down into child's pose. And it's totally fine if your back and your hips prefer to have you stay pretty high and you never touch your heels, that's fine. Wiggling your fingers and rolling your wrists, preparing for the other side. Hands or elbows back on the mat, knees under the hips. Let's slide the left toes curled under, slide them down the mat. On the ball of the foot, press into the heel, stretch the calf. And then you can slide the opposite hand, the right hand slides forward, but the fingers can stay on the floor, thumb pointing up. And then you can lift and lower, hand and foot, several deep breaths. And eventually coming to stillness with one arm or one leg or both opposite arm and leg, lifting, stretching for a deep breath. And settling down. You could choose to sit back on your heels. 
in a seated position or find child's pose once again. And we're all just gonna breathe and let the body rest for a moment. Just giving ourselves time to absorb the work. And there's lots of fun ways to move into standing. I think you guys are up for a little more challenging transition, but if you would prefer a different one, please take it. What I'd like to do is use my blocks on their most stable, well, the medium setting, it's pretty stable. I'm on my knees at first, and I'm gonna stretch one of my legs back. I'm gonna stretch my right leg back and lift the knee off the floor up and down a few times. Yep, just using the core. And then the leg that's behind me, I'm gonna bring it all the way forward between my blocks. All the way forward. And I might need to lift the blocks up a little higher to get myself out of my rounded back. Now we're gonna lift the back knee. Here's a high lunge. Good. All right, you can rock a little. We're gonna step the back foot forward and then we're gonna switch legs. We're gonna go back into a lunge in a minute. So take your time. Stepping all the way forward, we're in a deep forward fold, and then take the other foot back. Long lunge now. Other leg in front, other leg behind. Good. Drop the knee down. I'm gonna lower my blocks a little bit, and I'm gonna take the front leg and step it all the way back. Toe curled under, stretching back and forth. Good. <laughs> if you're in a plank, good job. You can enjoy that work in your core. And then we're gonna bring the leg that's way back there all the way forward between the blocks again. Curl those back toes, lift the back knee. Good. And then you can step all the way forward and bring the elbows to the thighs and slowly rise up. All right, let's clear our mats and just swing our hips a little bit. Just coming into standing, rolling the arms. Good. I'm going to walk up to the top of the mat and settle into a mountain pose. Gentle engagement of the whole body, feeling the soles of the feet, the tops of the feet, the shins, the calves. Everything is working just a little bit. The glutes, just a little squeeze, a little pulling in of the belly, a little rolling back of the shoulders, a little aligning of the head over the neck, and a deep breath. Bringing the hands together near the heart in that prayer pose or Anjali Mudra. Start to bend the knees up and down a few times. Just testing into your hips, your knees, your calves, your ankles. And stay in a slightly bent knee. Come up onto your left ball of the foot and then step that left foot back. We're gonna step into warrior one. Drop the heel, the front knee stays bent. And you can start to lean forward right away. Stretching into that back heel, such a good calf stretch, feels really good. And you might come up onto the ball of both feet up and down a few times, just warming the muscles of the legs and the joints. Good. Take one more breath and start to straighten the front knee. Lean into your pyramid pose. And from a leaning position or standing all the way up, we're gonna take the back foot and open it up. So we're transitioning. <laughs> We're kind of almost sideways on our mat here, like catty corner. So we're gonna take the foot that was pointing toward the short end of the mat and turn it toward the long end. And now probably one foot is a little ahead of the other. So I'm gonna scoot the toes of the one foot up to meet the other. So now we're in a wide angle. <laughs> kind of a wonky transition, that's fun. Okay, bend the knees just a little, feel that work in the hips again. And then straightening the legs, you might kick your heels out a little, let your toes turn in slightly as you take your hands again to your heart or to your hips and lean on the diagonal. So you start to hold the weight of the torso in your core, in your hips, in your legs. You start to feel the weight of the body as you stretch as deeply as you like, but go really slowly. This is much more about the weight of the stretch than the depth of the stretch, if that makes any sense. Make sure you can still move your hips just a little bit. Don't lock those knees, unlock them. Take one more breath. 
and lift the entire torso as one push into the feet good bring the heels in and the toes out bend into your knees and find goddess pose maybe rock a little you can kind of slide the body side to side now if for any reason one of your knees hurts just stay still in the middle or even straighten your legs if that feels better you can straighten and bend a few times let's add the arms taking them into cactus arms or goalpost hands and then on the inhale we straighten arms and legs and reach into five pointed star pull the belly in exhale sink into goddess pose slide up and down with your breath Feel free to add the lion's breath on the exhale. Stick your tongue out and say, <sighs> as you bend down, inhaling, rise, exhaling. <sighs> One or two more times. <sighs> Sinking into goddess. We're just gonna let the hands fly, float down to the thighs and we can rock a little. And then slowly straighten the knees. And we're going to move slowly to our warrior one on the other side. If you need a break, if you need to step your feet together, do it. You'll kind of have an urge to do that. Just, just follow those urges. <laughs> Good. So the toes that used to be at the front of us are now going to be the ones at the back. So it's going to be my right toes. I'm turning them forward and then I'm going to even turn them more toward the other end of the mat. So I'm shifting my foot, but it's turning my hips and I have to turn the other foot as well. So now, voila, I'm pointing toward the other short end of my mat. I'm gonna bend into the knee, front knee. I might need to step the back foot in so I can keep the heel on the floor. Hands to the heart, leaning forward. Now let's add a little arm stuff here. Now check your feet first, make sure they're on little different tracks, not on the same line. So heel toe that front foot a little wider, good. Keep the hips squared, pull that back hip forward slightly, the front hip back a little. Let's add the arms, either reach them forward, pull the belly in, reach them wide, pull the belly in, let them slide behind you, open that chest, still pull the belly in, or sweep them all the way up. And let's take a couple more breaths, just feeling the pose. The arms come down first, a little more bend in the front knee as we start to bring that back foot forward and we're back into our just gentle chair pose and then up to mountain. Swinging those hips side to side, moving them around in big circles. Now you have lots of choices, of course, options for your balance, your one-legged pose today. I'd love to do tree pose. There's lots of ways to do tree. But I'd also like to give you the option to move from tree into warrior three. So to do that, I'm gonna have a wall in front of me. You could have a chair in front of you that you're holding onto when you're in your tree pose. So I'm gonna have my standing leg. I like to put my foot on a block so I have a block between my feet. I'm gonna place my foot on the block open. My right knee, the left leg is my standing leg. I'm gonna be nice and tall. I'm gonna add the arms, tree pose. Deep breaths. At any time, you can lower the arms, the hands to a chair or the wall or a table, anything you like. As you lean forward, keep your back long. My knee is still in tree pose. And then I'm gonna bend my standing knee a little, turn the open knee forward and stretch the leg back. Pop. And that's our warrior three transition. I definitely have something to hold on to to do that. And of course, you can go as deep forward as you like. Make sure that standing leg has lots of bend in it. If the hip on top is open, then you're practicing more of a half moon, and that's fine. You could do that. If the hip on, on top connected to that back leg can drop down, that's more of a full warrior three. And then we're slowly going to move back to tree pose. Whew. Hand to the heart and down. <laughs> That's a little bit of turning upside down there, transitioning back and forth between those poses. If you need a break, maybe you're walking up and down the mat a little or just taking a little movement. If you're ready right away for the other side, then you know what to do. And remember, you might choose to skip the warrior three altogether or you might stay there longer. 
First we ground, we set up the tree pose. And then we choose our support and we start to lean into and stretch back into warrior three, if that's something you're interested in. From warrior three, you could transition in and out of tree to warrior three a few times. Just kind of practicing that moving, rolling, <laughs> balancing of life and feel that wobble. That's where we're at in our lives right now. The changing. When you've had enough, you're back to mountain pose. Just enjoy your moment if you need a little longer. Finding mountain when you're ready. Deep breaths. Let's slowly fold forward. Supported forward fold. Elbows on the thighs. Tip the tailbone back and up. And then step back slowly. Maybe down dog or plank or just table pose. We're going to all end up in child's pose and then on our belly. So of course you can skip things or you can stay longer in one place than another. As you find a resting place down on your belly, just make a little pillow for your head or your chin. Maybe widen the legs or bring them to closer. Just get comfy on the ground. We're gonna do a little locust and a little half bow. So we'll start by just lifting the head slightly. And as you know, there are many options for locust pose. You could just do the legs, just the arms. You could do them both together. I'm just gonna do the legs today. My head is slightly lifted, so there's a little work in the upper back. I'm gonna press my weight into the pelvis, into the pubic bone, and let the feet float off the floor. I'm just gonna count three or four deep breaths. You can be doing any variation you like. Softening slowly back to the ground. Maybe rocking the heels with the toes curled under. I'm gonna reach out through my left arm and slide my right hand right up next to my chest as I roll onto my left side. But I might pause in the middle of the roll and let the body just kind of stretch the twist. I love that stretching twist. And then when I'm ready, I'm just gonna be on my left side. I'm gonna walk my knees forward so that they can stack together in a comfortable, stable position. And that top leg can pull in and roll around a few times. I'm moving toward my half bow with my foot pointed back. So you might want to grab a strap if you know that your arm doesn't reach your foot. And when you're ready, you can start to slide the foot back behind you, pointing the kneecap toward the end of the mat, reaching back or using your strap opening up that thigh, stretching into the back bend just a little bit. Take another deep breath and slowly release the leg. Let it stretch down to the end of the mat and begin to lift and lower it. Now keep your belly strong. Straighten out your back so it's not so much of a back bend as you're moving your leg. So readjusting in transition, very difficult. You can feel free to let the leg go higher and higher and higher. If you like to wrap a strap around your foot or grab your ankle or your pants, or maybe the toes are within reach, take a breath and stretch. And then the knees can settle back one on top of the other for a moment. And we'll stretch back out down the end of the, onto the belly, or you can sit up here and go down to the other end of the mat so you can still see and we're going to roll onto our bellies and do the other side of our sequence 
So first we settle on the belly. And then you move into your locust practice. Maybe it's just the arms this time and the legs stay connected to the mat. Maybe it's opposite hand and leg floating up, a little bit of swimming, whatever feels right to you for three or four breaths. Settling down as you slowly rocking as you go, roll onto now the other side. For me, it's my right side. And I'm gonna restack my knees, bending them up. And just lifting the top leg, rolling it around a few times. I know that half bow is coming, so if you like your strap, you can wrap it around your foot. And then we start to swing the foot back. Point the knee down the end of the mat. The knee likes to float up, so let's float it right down in line with the hip. Stretching, opening the quad muscle, keep the belly strong so the low back doesn't get too tight. Stay as long as you want. After which you stretch the leg down the mat and begin to lift the leg. Feeling the work keeping the core engaged. Moving into leg higher and higher, stretching where you like it. And resting, knees stacking whenever you're ready. Slowly roll forward and push yourself up into seated. And we're gonna be seated for just a few minutes, stretching out our hamstrings a little bit. Sometimes at the end of class, I don't sit on a blanket. I'm gonna try it, see if it feels good. We'll start with staff pose with the legs stretched out in front of us. And you might want a strap, but you don't have to use one. Sometimes it feels good. So first we just get tall. We're moving the body into that beautiful 90 degree angle at the hips, the legs stretching straight out. The hands might float up to the height of the shoulders or straight up in the air or wide, or maybe you're just gonna make some big circles. Keeping that spine long and tall, pull the belly in strong, keep breathing. One more breath. The hands can rest on the lap as you bend one knee up. I'm gonna bend my left knee and maybe rock it a little bit. I wanna turn into a twist. So I'm gonna walk the hip that's connected to this bent knee back a little bit. So the long leg hip goes more in front and I'm turning toward this bent knee and now I'm gonna choose my twist. I might let the knee go open and just let the hands be wide looking over my shoulder or I might pull the knee in or cross the arm over the thigh. Just enjoy the twisting, be gentle, especially if you have osteoporosis, you wanna go gently into the twists. They're very therapeutic, they're very good for building bone, but they're also, if you do it too hard, they can cause damage, so be gentle. And don't turn all the way forward again, just turn toward your knee now, letting the heart be right in front of the knee. Let it be open if it's not already and start to lean toward the knee that's on the floor now. Push out through the long leg and just rock the toes of that long leg side to side a few times. Yeah, do you feel that all the way up into the socket of the hip? Just massaging that. If you're interested at this point, you could bend that long leg and stretch it back. Maybe keep it pretty bent or stretch it all the way back and take a quick pigeon. If that's something that's quick for you, you don't have to do it. You might come into a pinwheel shape and just lay down over the knee and take a deep breath. As we come back up, that knee stays bent and the other leg now goes straight back to where it was in our staff pose. So now we're in a half butterfly. 
and we're gonna turn our hearts toward the long leg now that it's sticking straight back out in front of us and we're gonna lean down the leg. If there's osteoporosis, you're keeping your spine long, you're actually gonna pull that hip back in line with the other hip, but kinda have to rock a little to get there. Now the hips are square and we're just leaning into the hamstring. This is where sometimes it's nice to have a strap because you can just roll the shoulders back and pull into that strap and stretch the long back of the leg, take a breath. If you're interested, you could start to twist toward the hip of the long leg, taking that opposite hand, the one that matches the knee and crossing it over. Little bit of a leaning twist, take a breath. And relax by leaning way back and dragging the foot up so the soles of the feet are side by side and you might rock your knees or you might sit up or even roll into a deep forward fold here. That's not recommended if you've got any kind of back issues so stay nice and tall if it's better for your back. Rock a few times. And then let's see if I can remember that sequence on the other side. <laughs> let's stretch both of our legs out side by side once again, and we'll take those big arm swoops. Inhale, the arms come up toward each other and they sweep out on the exhale, slowing it down with the breath. Keep the spine long and tall and the belly strong and the legs pushing out in front of you. Good. Let the hands come down and let's bend the other knee, the right one this time. We're gonna move into our twist first. We walk the hip back, the long leg pushes forward. Maybe the knee stays up or maybe it goes wide as we turn into the twist for a breath or two. Long neck, soft shoulders. And we don't even turn all the way back forward. We just turn toward the bent knee, let it come to the floor if it's not there already and start to lean toward it. Choosing what you'd like to do with your other leg. Maybe it just rolls forward and you're just right, you're there and you're just fine. Or maybe you're bending the knee or stretching the leg back into pigeon pose. You've got three or four breaths to be a little bit creative. Walking yourself back up. The leg that is bending back is gonna come straight out in front of us again. We're gonna keep the knee bent. We're gonna walk our hips back in line with each other. Good, and then we'll start to lean down the long leg. Now we're stretching those hamstrings again. No rounding if you have osteo, but if you don't, then you can let the head hang a little bit. And then of course you can add the option of the twist. The hand comes across and a breath. and lean way back. And this time, instead of butterfly, we're just gonna bring the soles of both feet together, scoot ourselves into position, and do one more movement for our core. So we'll do a little boat pose and then a little wheelbarrow or reverse table. So I'm gonna squeeze my shoulder blades back and point my fingers straight off the long edges of the mat. My feet are flat, toes pointing toward that short end. I'm gonna lift the hips up off the floor just a bit up and down once or twice and then settle the hips leaning back still maybe bending the elbow so i get a little more diagonal i'm just going to lift and lower the feet a few times keep the belly strong and then settling the feet come down onto your elbows keep the back flat keep the belly strong you can add lifting the entire leg, knees bent, or you can just lift one leg at a time. Keep yourself strong. Eventually the feet flatten and the elbows widen and we lay all the way back, rocking the knees side to side. We've got about four minutes before we usually take our Shavasana. If there's other things you'd like to do, please feel free, just tune me out. If you're interested, I'd like to do just one more Movement like we started with, pulling the right knee in, lifting the left leg up. And then we'll do a few twists. Remember, you can do what you like. Deep breath in, lowering the leg on the exhale. This time I'm just gonna let the leg rest on the floor. I'm not gonna hover. And I might rock the right knee a little side to side. When I'm ready to lift the leg, I'm gonna take a breath in and move on the exhale. 
squeezing the knee in to finish the full exhale out. And then the other leg lifts and it lowers on the exhale, softening to the floor so I can rock the left knee. Always moving on the exhale. Both knees eventually coming back into the chest, setting the feet down. Let's start with a wide knee twist. The feet touch the edges of the mat, wherever you like, whatever toe feels right to you. And we just let the knees rock over to the left edge, going as deeply as they wanna go. Some people need the help of that foot that's on the ground in front, and they like to pick it up and set it on top of the, the knee that's connected to that hip up there. Be careful there though, that's a lot of weight. Take the arms out wide, breathe deep. And slowly but surely make your way into the other side of this wide knee twist. Walking the feet back onto the floor. I'm going to put my feet closer together, about hips width apart, and then I'm going to slide my hips to the right edge of the mat. And you have two options. You can leave your feet on the floor and let the knees rock over to the left, or you can pick the feet up, pull the knees in, and then roll the body over. And that's just going to move the twist higher up the back. The higher, closer your knees are to your chest, the higher the twist will go up the spine. So it really depends what you like, and you can do them both and you can rock back and forth. <laughs> We're just gonna do one side at first and take one more breath. Because we have to scoot the hips, we can only do one side at a time. So now we're gonna reposition the feet, reposition the hips all the way to the other edge and choose the knees together twist of your, of your pleasing. <laughs> Long deep breaths. And now it's time for Shavasana. Just allowing the body to find a resting place. If you haven't already, you can make your choices for what your body really wants. Remember, it's okay to move when you need to, but we wanna go back towards stillness. The beautiful stillness where we can allow the body to begin to heal and restore. Times of change, of things turning upside down, can be very stressful. Even if we don't feel like we're doing a lot, we're definitely, as we move back into the world, we're definitely doing more than we were. <laughs> we need to go slow and gentle. And I'd like to offer you a body scan today for Shavasana. Feel free to turn me down or whatever you need. This is something that I'm trying to create a habit around as I go to sleep at night. You can start at your head or your toes and I'll start at the toes. And I'm just gonna say thank you as I end the day or as we end our class here together. I wanna come back into the body and back into gratitude. Thank you for the toes and the soles of the feet. Thank you to the toes Thank you to the feet for all they do. Thank you for the ankles and to the ankles. Thank you calves and shins and knees, precious knees. Thank you thighs and quad and hamstrings and big femur bones. Thank you hips and glutes. Thank you pelvis and all the organs there all the organs of reproduction and digestion. Thank you for all the work you do. All the hormones and all the stress that we hold in our core. Keep moving up the body one by one, saying thank you to and for each and every beautiful part. The belly, the low back, the waist. I have and some of us have a little bit of extra weight. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for every cell in the body. 
Thank you for the lungs and the heart, the chest, the breast tissue, and the muscles that cover the torso. Thank you for the shoulders, those beautiful tender joints, the arms, the elbows and the forearms, the wrists and the hands and every beautiful little bone in every finger. Coming back up the arms, back to the neck, the throat, the larynx, all that resides inside that helps us speak, the ears that help us hear and listen, the jaw, the teeth, every little one of them, thank you. Thank you to the sinuses, the cheeks, the eyes, the nose, the forehead, and the entire scalp, and all the hair, every hair on our bodies. Deep breath. Thank you for our whole bodies. Thank you, body. And you might take your left hand back to your heart and your right hand to your belly or just leave it open beside you, receiving love, receiving comfort and stability in the midst of change. Remembering what Rumi says, and do not worry that your life is turning upside down. How do you know that the side you are used to is better than the one to come? Take a really deep breath in, pull it all the way, fill all the edges of the lungs up, hold on to the breath, and when you're ready to let it go, open your mouth, sigh it out, and begin to move your fingers. Slowly coming back to life again. Take your time. If you come up sooner than others, you might find that mudra again, linking the fingers together and the pointing those little pointer fingers toward the earth, feeling that stability and comfort there that we will find our way along our path. So much gratitude that we get to keep doing it together. <laughs> Hands at the heart or in your lap, anywhere you like. Thank you so much for being here. Namaste.